Hello, everyone. As we're currently waiting for the 69th episode of Dafuk's Skibidi original series to get released, I want to remind you guys of the coolest jokes and references to memes, movies, and video games you could have missed from episode 1 to episode 68. So I created the top 15 funniest references of the Skibidi Universe series. Be sure to watch this video to the end and write in the comments below how many of those you already knew and recognized. I really want to know how educated my audience is, because I am sure, guys, you have the biggest brains in the universe and nothing can actually escape your attention. But even in this case, I am sure there are lots of references you never stumbled upon, so get your tea and snacks ready because it'll be awesome. Let's go! In the 15th place, we have the orange juice dance from the game called Fortnite. Yeah, you probably never heard of that one as it's really little known and niche. Just kidding. This reference got to be pretty popular amongst the fans of Skibidi Toilets, especially in the time when earlier seasons had been coming out. Those dancing speaker men became one of the fans' favorite little gags in the whole series. And I can't really blame you guys for that. This dance animation is hilarious. In the 14th place, we have the noisy, celebrated appearance of Jesse Pinkman and Walter White characters that came to visit us straight from the Breaking Bad series. It was quite surprising to see such an unserious reference in the midst of Dafuk's arguably the most serious and thrilling season yet. Just imagine. We're trying to solve all the intricate mysteries and plot twists Dafuk prepared for us, and meanwhile we're watching the most tragic and heartbreaking moments ever witnessed in the whole series. And then BOOM! That's Jesse and Mr. He Goddamn Right White as the main chemist working in the Skibidi main lab. Honestly, it was simply hilarious to see. I think those two were a good moment of relief for all of us, trying to keep it sane while waiting for the grand finale. Now I really want to see Hank's head on top of one of Skibidi police toilets in the future episodes. In the 13th place, we have the iconic Plungerman pose from the beginning of episode 50, as he walks slowly towards the giant vacuum Skibidi urinal, spewing the billow of flame out of his open mouth. This is the reference to the cover art of the game called God of War 2 where Kratos also walks with his face turned away from the camera, holding two prolonged weapons in his hands. Also, this may be the reference to this one God of War art in specific, where Kratos is slowly moving in the direction of large sun with the color of lava, with the bunch of enemies seen around. Looks quite familiar to me. And honestly, I love seeing the references to some epic or cool stuff in this series, because this really adds more weight to it. In the 12th place, we have the Andrew Tate Skibidi toilet that can be briefly seen in episode 17. The infamous bald head with the smirk and which is more important, the iconic black sunglasses covering half of his face. And mind that guys, Andrew Tate Skibidi did wear glasses long before TV men with their glow appeared in the series. This dude was kinda ahead of his time here. In the 11th place we have two little references. The first one was spotted by me in the third part of episode 67, when the Titan TV man epically appeared to confront Skibidi Scientist. Before his physical emergence, we hear the intimidating sound coming from the vortex of black haze with thunder, which is the reference to the movie Godzilla, and more specifically, to the scene where the monster appears in the environment full of rain and thunder, ready to shoot with the energy it gained. During that scene, we can hear almost the exact same sound, which is so freaking cool. And the second reference standing on the same level as the Godzilla one to me is the Titan TV Man sword that can be seen in close-up in the fourth part of episode 67. That sword and the rune engraved on it is the reference to the Optimus Prime from the series of movies called Transformers. In the 10th place, we have episode 15, where the sign on the remote controller POV presses on to cause an explosion, says, Baba Bowie. For whatever reason, Dafuk himself has a really warm feeling towards this meme. It even appeared once more in the Multiverse of Beatboxes episode 2. It's written on the panel along with other quirky titles, such as Balls Torture, Destroy Obamna, and Dafuk Boom, the title of the author's actual channel. In the 9th place, we have the iconic night fight between the Skibidi army and the Alliance forces, with the infected Titan speakerman on the Skibidi side. We saw him appearing in episodes 33 and 38 to sit on top of the skyscraper, which is not only cool as heck, 
but also a reference to the movie called King Kong that was shot in 2005. In this movie, the giant ape, who's similar to Godzilla in size, by the way, was brought into New York to be put in circus, but it broke free and started a chaos on New York streets. The final of this movie is happening on top of the roof, and it's a pretty memorable scene for me. I think Da Fook liked it as well. In the eighth place, we have the first appearance of Big TV Man we could see in episode 40. He had a long body, multiple appendages with the TV screen on top of each, which also produced the eerie gray light, and he was dressed in a neat black suit. Besides, he had a really weird aura around himself that was so strong that it even scared Skibbity away. Does it sound any familiar to you guys? Yeah, that's right. It's the reference to the legendary Slenderman character that was originally created in the Creepypasta story and then had been developed into the indie horror game, which was released in 2012. In the seventh place, we have Da Fook himself. As the series progress further and further, the more complex its storyline gets. Right now, one of the most anticipated plot arcs is the connection between the white terracotta brother and Da Fook, the secret agent. We're trying to crack the code of the whole Da Fook's character here, and to understand if he's a friend to the Alliance or an independent entity pursuing his own selfish goals. Sometimes Da Fook intervenes in the events of the series, and sometimes he just observes what is happening, probably enjoying what he sees. And that is the reference to the image of G-Man in original Half-Life games produced by the Valve Studio. Originally, he was also a character sort of breaking the fourth wall of the audience's perception. He used to appear out of nowhere and had more knowledge on the whole universe while also keeping existing inside of it. I'd say it's an awesome way to put yourself as a creator into your series. And it's also fun both for you and your audience. In the sixth place, we have our favorite speaker woman from episode 61 with her unique and playful walk. This girl caught so many people's attention due to her lighthearted attitude towards everything happening, but at the same time, she's also incredibly strong. This walk is a reference to the absolutely hilarious walking scene from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3, where Peter Parker got the meaner attitude and started acting as the drunk Hollywood star in New York streets. At least we're lucky that Speaker Woman does not try to outdance anybody or slap me in the face or something. And besides, as we're talking about Sam Raimi, check out this thing as well. In episode 44, didn't this giant skibidi with claws remind you of anyone? This is the reference to the Dr. Octopus, or Otto Octavius, from Spider-Man 2. In the fifth place, we have the remixed version of the iconic Skibidi Dop Dop Yes Yes song that was remade for episode 6 specifically. It sounds like Lady Gaga's Bloody Mary song, which is the reference to the Wednesday dancing scene, where the main character was giving her gothic everything on the dance floor. It was an unserious episode with multiple key characters in it, and it made a lot of people laugh, including me. In the fourth place, we have the Penguin Zero Skibidi skin appearing in episode 61. Of course, this long-haired mustache guy with the glasses on it is a reference to the well-known content creator Moist Critical, who made a video on the phenomenon of Skibidi toilets on July 14th called What is Skibidi Toilet? Apparently, the attention from one of the most popular creators on YouTube flattered Defouk, and he introduced the geeky Jesus Skibidi toilet as a form of gratitude. And by the way, such an obscure name is the reference too, because Penguin Zero joked several times how he was often confused with Jesus on Facebook. Also, check put this iconic scream. In the third place, we have episode 27 with multiple harmless Skibidi chilling inside the building. Then the door gets busted and the boost effect shatters the screen. The only thing which is missing here is the FBI open up line. FBI open up! It's not the deepest reference of all, but I freaking love it. In the second place, we have the iconic handshake between Titan Cameraman and Titan Speaker Man in episode 59. Moreover, this handshake was mirrored in episode 66 as well, this time with the red-shirted Speaker Man and Plunger Man dressed in black. This is the reference to the well-known Predator meme, where two guys give each other a strong buddy's handshake, where one of the guys in dressed in red. You son of a bitch! 
And finally, in the long-awaited first place, we have the Will Smith slap reference. In episode 28, we see the black Skibidi toilet with the hat and mustaches that get slapped into the oblivion by Titan Speakerman. <laughs> oh, wow! The 28th episode got released in May, while the whole Oscar slap incident happened in March, where Will Smith punished Chris Rock, who was supposed to give him an award, for the unserious attitude towards Will Smith's wife. I'm not really sure who this poor Skibidi is supposed to represent in this case, but I think Titan Speakerman simply avenged the Oscar Academy members that had to witness this whole mess one year ago. But it was a really good show for the audience, and as the cherry on top, here's the hilarious thing I noticed about Resident Evil 7. Yeah, I know it came out in 2017, but look, doesn't this doll's head in the toilet remind you of anything? I think it was a sign. And that was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button under this video, as I always appreciate your support. And be sure to subscribe to my channel not to miss my new videos. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!